Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, overcoming adversity, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the highly respected head coach of the University of Utah football team. He is Coach Kyle Whittingham, and today we are going beyond football. Hey, Coach Kyle, welcome to Beyond the Line. Thank you, Coach Rusty. Really appreciate you having me on. Coach Kyle, I know some of your friends, and they all tell me that you are an exceptional skier, golfer, and <laughs> tennis player. I mean, have you won tennis tournaments before? I have, as a matter of fact. Now, not not a real high level, 4.5, as high as I got. Uh, and I did win a couple of 4.5 tournaments. Uh, I think it was two singles and one doubles uh, title. Then I went to the 5.0s and got smoked. So I, I was definitely definitely not a 5.0. But uh, I got to be a very good 4.5. And, and uh, uh, that was about where I, I topped out. I didn't start playing tennis until I was like 25 years old. So got a late start. But uh, thoroughly enjoy the game uh, and play it to this day. I, I can't play at a four or five level right now, maybe a four zero, but but I sure enjoy it and uh, really developed a passion passion for it um, when I was a uh, you know graduate assistant coach back in my mid twenties. Well, Coach Kyle, I mean, being a four point five player, that's impressive, and and winning tournaments, that's also impressive as a four five and. Coach Kyle, um, you became defensive coordinator for the University of Utah football team in 1995, and then you became head coach technically in 2004 when you and Coach Urban Meyer co-head coached that that bowl game, right? Correct. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm trying to remember the, I can't remember the exact date, but sometime mid December, uh, I got named the head coach at the University of Utah. Coach Meyer still had not left for Florida. That's where he was heading off to. And we had the uh, Fiesta Bowl against Pittsburgh coming up in January. And uh, the AD asked me, hey, you know, you want to be the head coach for, for the game or you want to be co-head coach? And I, I thought the closer that we uh, operated to, the, to how we did during the season gave our players the best chance to win the game. So rather than disrupt things and say, hey, I'm the head coach, so, you know, we're going to do things my way. We just continued to do things as we had all season long. Uh, we did have the co-head -co -co coach titles. And uh, we ended up playing very well in that game, beat Pittsburgh uh, handily. I can't remember the exact score, but I think we won by 20, 25 points uh, in that game. Well, of course, having uh, Coach Urban Meyer and Coach Kyle Whittingham together, that's like, that's not fair for Pitt. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I, I learned a great deal from Urban Meyer and, and uh, you know, just to get off track a little bit. He, uh, he got hired in 02. Uh, I was already on the staff as a D coordinator here at Utah. I thought, I should have got the job. I thought I was ready for the job. Short story, uh, you know, that nothing could have been better for me than to spend those two years with Urban Meyer and continue to learn and develop as a coach. Then when that time came, when the when it was my opportunity, I was much more prepared. Man, that's I love I love hearing that um, because some people they they'll take it the wrong way when they don't get the job. And Coach Kyle, since you became head coach. It seems like your teams are consistently ranked in the top 20 in the country. I mean, it, it's impressive the culture of excellence that you have built with your teams. And when you're recruiting, okay, besides talent, what do you what do you look for in players besides talent? Well, we place a high, high premium on character of the individuals. Um, you know, we want guys that are, that are good people as well as good football players. Uh, well-rounded people, students, uh, good in the community, um, you know, just people that give back into the community. And we've turned down hundreds of really, really good football players that we just don't think are good fits for our program through the years because they just didn't have the, you know, the elements that uh, are important to us. And so if you uh, were to say, you know, put pin it down to one single word, uh, it would be characters is the thing we look for in addition to obviously the talent to be uh, able to get it down the field. And that's what you're about. I mean, you're a man of great character and, and, you know, you're a reflection of your team and your team is a reflection of you. And coach Kyle, when you're coaching and 
in terms of peak performance, getting your team to really be at that peak performance week after week, what are some key things that you focus on? Well, first of all, our players understand completely that, that the Monday through Friday process is imperative to what's going to happen on Saturday. The games are won or lost far before kickoff. And uh, it's, it's the work ethic, the attention to detail, um, putting in the time, um, making sure that we play as a team. I mean, there's so many variables that go into it. But, uh, you know, we've been able to be consistent, uh, fairly consistent for the last 20 years. Um, and a big part of that, a huge part of that, is the great job that our assistant coaches do in the evaluation process of getting the right players in the program, mentally and physically tough players that are really committed to winning. Coach Kyle, I want to ask you about the importance of fundamentals because, I mean, it seems like your teams are always just solid with their fundamentals. And and I know that in order to have fundamentals, you, it takes a lot of discipline and you have to control everything that you have control of. What are your thoughts about that? Exactly right on the, right, right on the money. You hit the nail on the head as far as uh, football is a game of blocking and tackling when it comes right down to it. And the teams that block better and tackle better than the other teams typically win more games. And, and uh, that's something that we uh, place a premium on. Uh, we have spring football. Uh, in uh, at this level of, of uh, football, and we are able to focus solely on fundamentals during that spring football time. We don't pay much attention at all to schematics. It's all making each player in our program better fundamentally and technique-wise. If you do that, you're going to have a chance to win every single week. And and uh, really, as a head football coach, you rely so much on your assistants. Now, you know maybe a basketball coach or a tennis coach, you can do it all yourself, or pretty much all of it yourself impossible to do it all yourself as a football coach so i've been blessed to have excellent assistant coaches throughout the years who uh, really have made my job very easy and and uh, have just done a great job of like i said getting the talent into the program and then developing that talent once it's inside the program coach kyle when when i became head coach during my first year i would share with my my team that do don't practice until you get it right Right. practice until you can't get it wrong what are your thoughts about that philosophy well, that's that's a great philosophy and uh, i think it was michael jordan that said hey you can spend hours and hours and hours uh practicing shots the wrong way and all you're going to get good at is you know shooting wrong <laughs> and so and so you got to do things the right way and that's that's where the coaches come in is to, is to fine-tune those fundamentals fine-tune those techniques because perfect practice makes perfect and that you know the old adage and uh, that's so important that that uh, your players grasp that and understand that when these coaches are coaching you and coaching you hard, it's because they care about you and they want you to succeed and do things the right way. As a player, you better be real concerned when you stop getting coached. You know, that that's a sign that, uh, Hey, maybe I better get with the program because uh, if I'm not getting coached, then uh, they're probably looking to go past me. I completely agree. When, when I get on a player's case, I mean, it's because I really care about them and, I, and it's just what you said right there. And, I want to ask you, Coach Kyle, about your quarterback, Cameron Rising. What are some qualities that makes him such a great leader? Wow. Well, first of all, he uh, he is the leader of the leaders on our football team. He is the guy that everybody looks to. Uh, he sets the bar and then demand that everybody lives up to that, that expectation that he has set. Um, he makes everybody around him better. And really, that's probably the, the, the mark of a great leader, the single greatest attribute or, or asset is for uh, the as the ability to make those around you perform better. That's exactly what Cam Rising does. Uh, he just sets sets the uh, bar by example. Uh, he makes sure that he is encouraging players, and getting things done the right way. He gets he has complete ownership on our football team, and uh, he's an alpha dog. I, I, that's the term I always end up using when people ask me about Cam. Is he is an alpha dog in every respect, and has the complete respect of all the all the players on the team. And, uh, you know, everybody looks to Cam to, uh, to uh, set the standard. Is, isn't that awesome? Like, he is literally un, like having another assistant coach on the mm -hmm. field, right? No doubt. He's an extension of the coaching staff. And, and it's not just Cam. You know, Cam is the leader of the leaders, like I mentioned. But we have uh, a leadership council that the, uh, the players elect each spring and each fall. And uh, it consists of uh, 12 to 16 players, depending on, depending on how the vote comes out. But each of those players is expected to take ownership of the football team and uh, be, you know, be among the guys that are that are demanding on the practice field, in the weight room, in the meeting room, 
that things get done the right way. Coach Kyle, I know through the years you've you've been recruiting players from Hawaii as well, from Kahuku, from Punahou, from St. Louis. I mean, and and a few months ago you you came to Hawaii, you brought your assistant defensive coaches with you, and my friend uh, Kahuku football coach Stuart Carvalho connected us together and. I have to say, your assistant coaches, the defensive guys that I got to meet, I I truly understand why and how you've created such a culture of excellence. I mean, they're so passionate. Talk about character. I mean, they have, I mean, exceptional character. Um, Can you expand more on, on the importance of building or attracting these coaches, which will attract the players as well? Yes, for sure. And, and uh, you know, when I hire assistant coaches, I look for three primary attributes, intelligence, character, and energy. And if I can get those three components in an assistant coach, we've really got, you've really got something there. And uh, our entire staff uh, is comprised of player of coaches like that, but you only had a chance to meet the defensive side. And they, they're the epitome of exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, they work great together. There's no egos involved. Uh, they're all pulling in the same direction. And uh, one thing we've been fortunate here in Utah to have is very strong continuity and consistency in the coaching staff. We lose very few coaches uh, here at Utah. Um, they all uh, love being here, love working here, love the community. We also have, uh, I think it's four of them, four or five of them that were former players here at Utah and want to stay connected to the program. And so uh, it's been uh, very fortunate for us to be able to stay together as a staff because I think that is certainly one element that's allowed us to have success along. I completely agree. I mean, I'm so fortunate to to be able to meet and know them now. And Coach Kyle, you have both of my books, and um, mm-hmm. I I love talking coaching with you and and building cultures of excellence and and just that that mindset of champions. And I want to ask you, what are some concepts that stood out to you in the books? Well, first of all, uh, having high character and making sure you do things the right way, carry yourself the right way present yourself the right way. And that, that is so important and it's important to us. As coaches, we have a mantra here that we want to develop the whole athlete. If all we do while you're in our program is make you a better football player, we failed. We want to help you in every aspect of your life. Uh, that includes your education, uh, your conduct off the field, your social life, everything, every aspect. And so our coaches take a genuine interest in our players, much like obviously you did with your, you know, all your great teams. And uh, that's part of the process here. And, and uh, that's uh, something that we emphasize uh, very strongly in recruiting to the parents that, hey, if your son comes here, you know, it's it's, it's a demanding program. It's there's high expectations, but uh, he's going to have a great experience if he sticks it out and he'll be a better person because of it. Yeah, and that's what it's about. I mean, we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're not just coaching them in the sport. We're trying to coach them to prepare them for life after sports as well. And and I think that's that's a huge part of when coaches and teams have success, not just short-term success, but long-term success like you have had. And Coach Kyle, my third book is coming out in uh, on May 7th, Superior. And I had a I love talking in depth with you about the difference between creating a culture of excellence versus a superior culture of excellence. And the difference between attention to details versus superior discipline details. What are your thoughts about you know going from good to great to superior? Well, that's exactly what it's all about. And you know, the good is the or, you know good is the enemy of great. Great, I guess, would be the enemy of superior. And you're always trying to attain the highest level and get the get the football team to the highest the highest uh, possible point. Uh, we want to focus on not just being a great team, but being a great program. That's really the emphasis and the focal point. And that's something you can sustain year after year after year. Uh, there'll be little peaks and valleys, but uh, for the most part, if we can maintain that level of excellence that we're after here at Utah, we're going to be a great program year in and year out and be able to uh, accomplish some, some very good things. Coach Kyle, I want to ask you about your bowl games because oftentimes when I'm watching you guys on TV in a bowl, it seems that, I mean, you win a lot of these bowl games and you guys are so competitive and, and it seems like, you know, your team, they start strong and they finish strong. 
and they have some kind of uh like something to prove to everybody and and it seems like every year you you tend to beat one of these highly ranked teams as well i mean how do you have this type of consistency and then that kind of um performance in these bowl games consistently yeah, well first of all i think uh the approach to the bowl game that our players take is uh, really the key. Now, the last few years, we've had a little bit of rough sledding in the bowl games. We we lost our quarterback, ironically enough, Cam Rising, and both we didn't have him for either of the, the last two. Actually, the last three bowl games. And so that no excuses though. I mean, you got to you got to deal with injuries, and that's part of the game. I understand that. But uh, overall, when you look at the entire body of work uh, from the program over the last 20, 25 years, we've had a really good run in bowl games. Not so well lately. Um, but uh, I think, again, the key when things were clicking is our players don't approach the bowl game as anything but another chance to win another football game. That's, that's really what you got to do. You got to work hard. You got to put in the same time, commitment, effort, energy as you do during the regular season. If you, if you think it's just a vacation and you're just going down to the bowl site to have a good time, you're not going to have much of a chance. But if you'll put in the work uh, during the bowl prep and take it seriously, which our players have done, then uh, you're always going to have a chance to win. Coach Kyle, um, in terms of identity of your team, what qualities do you want your team to be known for in terms of identity? Well, in a word, toughness. I think that's where it starts for us. And that's, that's what we're all about. That's both mentally and physically tough. Uh, grit is probably a good word that uh, describes us as well. Uh, we just When you come to play the huge, you know you're going to be playing for the full 60. You better be ready to play for the full 60 because our guys are going to bring it for the full 60 minutes. Uh, they're a physical group. We play a physical brand of football. We run the ball. We defend the run. And uh, I think that's probably the common theme. If you were to talk to other coaches and other programs that played us, I think you'd hear that same thing, that the Utes have a toughness about them that uh, is there year in and year out. And uh, that's been the case for, for a long time now. We, we take great pride in that. I completely agree. I, I When I watch your teams, that's one of the things that stands out to me, the toughness. Another thing, relentless competitors. Uh, I mean, another thing, discipline. And when you have those types of qualities as an identity, I mean, you're going to put yourself in a position to win. I mean, even if you're playing better schools, better teams, you're going to be in a position to win those games. What are your thoughts about that? Agree 100%. And uh, there's an old coaching axiom, you know, before you can win a game, you've got to not lose it. That, that would mean not making uh, bonehead plays, uh, you know, uh, thoughtless penalties, uh, sloppy play. I mean, you've got to be disciplined. You've got to be uh, smart. You've got to be completely in control of situational football. There's so many games within the game of football uh, you know, two-minute drill, four-minute drill, uh, third downs. I mean, there's just so many different aspects, uh, and you have to have great tactics and be able to play tactical football. That was a big uh, emphasis of Coach Bill Walsh, who was such that, that great 49er coach back when they were winning Super Bowls, is being masters of tactics and, and situational football. And, and uh, I think that's something that our assistant coaches do a great job of instilling into our players is understanding that every down is not created equal. That the tactics and the and the elements of the game can change based on situations. Coach Kyle, I I love talking with you about this. And and one one another thing that made our team successful was I tried to really not minimize but to eliminate unforced errors. Right. And it seems like when I'm watching these elite teams, these superior teams in sports and business. They, they seem to really not make unforced errors. I mean, when you're, when you're having a penalty like offsides or a false start or unsportsmanlike penalty or personal foul, I mean, you're just trying to help your team lose when you're making those types of senseless penalties. What are your thoughts? Exactly. And that's, uh, that's exactly what we preach and, and strive to avoid. Uh, you're never going to be penalty free or very seldom will you be penalty free in a game. But the penalties, as long as they're penalties of aggression and, and, and trying to do things right, trying to make plays rather than just senseless, uh, careless penalties, you know, a late hit way out of bounds or, or roughing the passer way after the ball is gone. I mean, you've got to be smart. You've got to play, you've got to play intelligent football. And, and uh, our players, I believe, have very high football IQs. And that goes, again, back to the assistant coaches 
instilling that in them from uh, the time they enter our program until they leave. And uh, that, that's just so important is to, is to be disciplined and take care of the details. Everything matters. That's another uh, mantra that we have in our program. Everything matters. Every detail matters. Coach Kyle, if we reflect back through the last 20 years in terms of your coaching, I mean, the times have changed. I mean, back in the day when Vince Lombardi was a coach, I mean, he would have to adapt and change his coaching style to be relevant and effective today. How, how did you adapt and adjust your coaching style or coaching philosophy through the past 20 years? Yeah, well, first of all, the players that we recruit are certainly different than they were 20 years ago. It's a, it's a different type of an athlete, and I don't want to say better or worse, but just different. And uh, things, uh, there's different things that are important to him. Social media, I mean, all the, all the peripheral stuff that didn't even exist 20 years ago have got to be taken into account these days. Um, offenses have evolved. You know, offenses are, are certainly have a much different look now than they did 20 years ago. And so I think it's just a matter of, of being uh, able to adapt, not being uh, stuck in your ways and rigid because times do change and you've got to change with the times. And, uh, you still want to put your own stamp on it as you change. But if you're unwilling to change and, and uh, you know, always looking for, you know, if you, if you think you have all the answers and you're not committed to trying to find a better way to do something every single year, then uh, you're going to get beat. Because I believe that, that uh, everyone else, all your opponents are moving targets. You know, they're getting better and you better get better at a little more rapid pace than they are. Coach Kyle, tell me the effects that the NIL situation has had on you. Wow. Uh, that's been the biggest game changer since I've been in coaching. And I've been in coaching a lot of years. And that is the single most uh, uh, item or uh, uh, just thing that has changed things dramatically. Uh, we went from a few years ago not even being able to give our kids a ride to their dorm or a slice of pizza to these kids are making tens, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so it's uh, it's completely changed the game uh, as far as recruiting. Uh, very seldom now is uh, you know what you know, what's my education going to look like? What's this going to look like? It's hey you know what what's my salary? <laughs> you know, what's my salary going to be? And, and uh, that combined with the transfer portal, where players are able to just up and leave at their you know really at their convenience or their you know whenever they feel like it. Uh, it has really caused you to uh, approach the game differently. We we are recruiting our own roster as uh, intently as we are new players coming into the program, recruiting the new recruits. So, you know, trying to main roster man or maintain your roster and roster management has become uh, much more challenging. Now we're very fortunate here at Utah. We talked about our culture. We have uh, far less less players leaving our program than the average programs out there, and so. In that respect, we feel very fortunate, and the portal has been very good to us. The net result of portal activity for us, as far as guys leaving, guys coming in, has been very good. So we think we've taken advantage of that, but it certainly has put a whole different spin on things, and uh, especially the NIL. And, and it, what it has done, Rusty, is, is really uh, made the playing field even less level than it was before. And I mean, you, you blue blood schools that are at the top of the food chain, you know, they have upwards of $20 million to work with in their NIL, where a lot of schools uh, maybe don't even have $1 million. So, so it is uh, creating changes and differences and disparities uh, in college football. But I think, uh, well, I don't think I know that you haven't seen the last of the changes. There's, there's several changes on the horizon that are going to separate the haves from the have-nots even more than has already. Coach Kyle, another big factor that I'm noticing is in the bowl games, there's a lot of the star players that are choosing not to play in the bowl game. And, you know, that's that's not right. It's like, you know, you start the season as a team and it's important to finish the season as a team. And how, how can the I mean, how can it be back to where the, these top players, the star players finish the season playing the bowl game? Well, that's a great question, and, and those are my sentiments exactly, that once you start something, you finish it. Uh, that's no longer the case. You have uh, players opt opting out of New Year's Six games. I mean, it, it, as crazy as that sounds, you get to a New Year's Six Bowl, and there's still several players at uh, Florida State. Look what happened to them this year in, in the bowl situation, and, and it's unfortunate. I'm old school. I believe that, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're letting your teammates down when you just go ahead and opt out. I think a lot of these players are getting uh, – uh, advice from maybe some the wrong people and 
uh, you know, the team concept is, has eroded a little bit in that respect. But uh, I think what may be the only solution is ultimately, I believe that the players are going to become employees of the university. And, and in order to get that paycheck, you know, you've got to play the games. So I guess, you know, hitting them in the pocketbook, maybe the, uh, you know, one of the only ways to ensure that uh, everybody is uh, available for the moment. Uh, this is interesting insights. Uh, and Coach Kyle, I mean, in terms of um, another challenge besides the NIL, so, I mean, you have a lot of moving parts. I mean, there's different dynamics for you being the head coach of a of a college football team. I mean, you're trying to coach the assistant coaches who's trying to coach the players as well. So what besides the NIL, what's another big challenge that you deal with as head coach? Well, I would say, uh, you know, we talked about the portal, which is obviously a huge thing along with NIL. Uh, I think maybe Chip Kelly said it best uh, when he made the very surprising move to go from UCLA head coach to offensive coordinator at Ohio State is he wanted to coach again. He wanted to coach players and, and have uh, the ability to have his own room and be able to teach. And as a head coach now, you've really turned into a CEO. That's that's a better title than coach in this day and age. And, and you are coaching the coaches. You know, that's one thing I you know I, I really enjoy doing is, is keeping our staff cohesive and on the same track and on the same page. But I have very little opportunity to instruct and coach the players uh, individually. You know, I'm, of course, I'm, you know, I set the environment. I'm the, you know, the guy that sets the culture and, and uh, you know, philosophies, but but uh, as far as hands-on teaching of fundamentals, techniques, all those things that uh, I love so much as an assistant coach, that's just not uh, part of the deal now as the head coach. You're really, like uh, like Chip said, a CEO, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a big corporation. I mean, that's, uh, it's like running a big company. Coach Kyle, there's, there's a, I mean, a lot of coaches out there that I know that admire you. And earlier, you mentioned Coach Urban Meyer. You mentioned Coach Bill Walsh. Who's who's another coach that you admire? Well, I would say the most uh, the one the coach that had the most impact on me, shaped me the most as a coach, was my father, uh, Fred Whittingham. He was he was my coach in college. I had the good fortune of, of playing for him at the collegiate level. Uh, finest defensive coach I've ever come across in my life to this day. Uh, then we had the uh, unusual experience to coach together at the at the collegiate level. He was the defensive coordinator here at Utah in 1994 when I got the job. I was the defensive line coach, uh, so we coached together at that point. And he had a chance to go back to the NFL uh, as a coach for the Raiders. I took over as the coordinator when he did that. Uh, a few years into that, he left the NFL again and he coached for me uh, a different dynamic. I was the coordinator and he was the position coach, so we kind of did a, a reversal there, but. Uh, he, everything that I'm about, uh, particularly on defense, fundamentals, techniques, philosophy, schematics, uh, came from my father, Fred Whittingham. Now, as far as uh, coaches that have really impacted me uh, at the head coach level, uh, Coach Ron McBride, who was the head coach here at Utah when I did get the job here, and gave me my first opportunity to, uh, to uh, coach at this level. Uh, Urban Meyer, who I already uh, mentioned that, you know, those two years that I spent with him, as far as being able to uh, just put a whole program together, day-to-day -day operations of a program, all the details, all the meticulous things that uh, go into uh, running a program successfully, learn from him. And then Lavelle Edwards, I was a good fortune to play for him. He was the head coach when I was in college and, and really just a, uh, a guy that uh, did things the right way. And so those three guys uh, between Ron McBride, Urban Meyer, and Ron McBr or, uh, Lavelle Edwards really shaped me. And I tried to take the best from each of them and kind of put it into a, a formula to, uh, you know, to try to become the best head coach I could. Uh, at, the, at the professional level, uh, the three Bills, the, the three Bills that really impacted me, Bill Walsh, who I already mentioned, Bill Parcells, and Bill Belichick. Uh, you know, probably, well, not probably, but three of the, the best to ever do it. So what, uh, you know, better people to try to emulate and learn from those three guys. Well, Coach Kyle, I know that our viewers will agree with me when I say that I want more Coach Kyle Whittingham's in the world. And I really want to thank you for taking time to join me on the show today. You bet, Rusty. It's been a pleasure. I really appreciate you having me on. And, and uh, shoot, congratulations to you and the, you know, that incredible run, uh, 22 state championships in a row. I mean, that's, 
I, that's I'm going to go out on a limb here and say no one will ever come close to breaking that record. So, so uh, I've learned a lot from you as well. That the book I read, your first book, was intriguing. I uh, loved it, and I'm moving on to the second one here with great anticipation here in the in the uh, near future. Great, thanks, Coach Kyle, and thank okay. you, thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Coach Kyle and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. liked this show, why don't you give us a like or subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much.